He indicates to Samantha that his goal is to get money, and if he gets money, that he intends to let her go. There was no truth to that. Number 10, Gerard John Schaefer. He's one of the most extreme cases of the modern serial killer that we have ever known in criminal history. In his mugshot, Gerard John Schaefer looks like an everyday man. His hair combed to the right and a friendly smile plastered on his face. However, a second glance may be warranted after learning that he potentially killed 30 people throughout the 60s and 70s. Schaefer was a Florida sheriff's deputy when he kidnapped two teenage women and tied them to a tree in the forest. The women escaped after Schaefer received a call on his radio. Had these two girls not been made of strong stuff, they would not have lived to tell the story and Schaefer would have never been caught. Sadly, Susan Place and Georgia Jessup, whom he kidnapped two months later, were not so lucky. He takes the two young girls by force to the woods near some swamps that border the ocean. In 1973, Schaefer was convicted of their murders and given two life sentences, but he's suspected of having over 30 victims. Number 9. Vicki Don Jackson While quite a big name in Texas, Vicki Don Jackson never gained national attention, despite killing at least 10 people in a three-month span from December 2000 to February 2001. Working as a nurse in North Texas, Jackson used a paralyzer called Mivacurium chloride on her elderly patients, which prevented their ability to breathe. The deaths didn't raise any red flags owing to the age of the patients, but alarm bells started ringing once administrators noticed the missing Mivacurium chloride. They came to suspect Jackson, as she was often the last person reported in the victims' rooms before their deaths. A syringe used to administer Mivacurium chloride was eventually found in her trash can, and she was subsequently charged and sentenced to life in prison. Number 8. Ronald Dominique Those from Louisiana may recognize Ronald Dominique as the Bayou Strangler, a serial killer who killed at least 23 men between 1997 and 2006. Dominique frequented gay bars around Houma, Louisiana, and would assault and kill the men he took home. We're not dealing with um, some, some very clever, conniving killer that, that has actually planned out his pleasurable activities in, in a meticulous way. Um, clearly, there is a, a method that works. But beyond that, there seems to be no care, consideration for these acts. In 2006, however, a survivor of Dominique's contacted the police to voice his suspicions about the man. Dominique was arrested after DNA matched him to recovered corpses, putting an end to his crimes. We went to court. Mr. Dominique pled guilty, and he was sentenced to eight consecutive life sentences. When you get a life sentence in Louisiana, you leave jail in a pine box. Number seven, Israel Keys. It's clear just how cold and calculating he was. Between 1998 and 2001, Israel Keys served in the United States Army. Fellow soldiers described him as being a quiet alcoholic who would down entire bottles of whiskey. Keyes began a criminal life committing bank robberies, burglaries, and arson. He also killed at least four people, although he's suspected of a further seven. Investigators say Keyes is a textbook serial killer. Like other famous killers in the past, he took pleasure in the act of taking a life. He talked about the rush that he got out of it, uh, the adrenaline and, and kind of the high from doing it. And I think, um, unfortunately, I think he enjoyed what he was doing. Perhaps his most famous victim is Samantha Koenig. The 18-year-old was kidnapped from work, assaulted and killed. Her body left in a shed while Keyes went on a family vacation. He indicates to Samantha that his goal is to get money and if he gets money that he intends to let her go. There was no truth to that. Upon returning, he took a ransom photo, pretending she was still alive. Keyes was caught using her debit card and arrested, but he took his own life while awaiting trial. Number 6. The Long Island Serial Killer It's not often that modern-day serial killers go unidentified, but the Long Island serial killer remains an exception. This may be a cold case for some time. It's unreal, and I'm just numb. Also given other names like the Craigslist Ripper and Gilgo Beach Killer, the Long Island serial killer is suspected of killing up to 16 people between 1996 and 2010. Ten victims have been officially linked to the Long Island serial killer, as their remains were found in December 2010 and the spring of 2011. One by one, the bodies were identified, and with each name, came the story of a troubled life cut short. Of the 10, four were escorts who would advertise through Craigslist. Although there have been several suspects of note, 
the killer's identity ultimately remains unknown. He's going to make a mistake. They all do. And we're going to get this guy. Number five, Salvatore Perone. Sal, why did you do it? Nicknamed the son of Sal. Staten Island man Salvatore Perone turned his frustrations with life into a bloody killing spree. His wife had left him and his business was failing, leaving him broke. In 2012, he began roaming the streets of Brooklyn and entering stores with Middle Eastern merchants. Arriving at closing time when the stores were empty, Perone shot and killed three merchants with a sawed-off rifle. His M.O. is still unclear, but police and witnesses say Perone was trying to sell women's clothing at the various locations, mostly small boutiques and 99-cent stores. After police searched his home, they found a 12-gauge shotgun, ammunition, and duct tape. He also carried around a so-called kill kit that included switchblades, a serrated knife, bleach, and latex gloves. I think it's reasonable to assume that he was going to continue doing this. And by arresting him, we have uh, saved lives. Perone was convicted of all three killings and sentenced to 75 years to life in prison. Number four, Lydia Sherman. An old-timey serial killer also known as the Derby Poisoner, Lydia Sherman lived in the eastern United States between 1824 and 1878. She seemingly had no regard for human life, not even her own children. She reportedly killed three husbands with arsenic in a span of seven years and disposed of eight children the same way, six of them being her own. All of these deaths were officially attributed to typhoid fever at the time, with no one being any the wiser to Sherman's secret life as a serial killer. Sherman's crimes eventually caught up to her, however, and she was sentenced to life in prison. She died of cancer at 53 in 1878. Number three, Amelia Dyer. When it comes to 19th century serial killers, few are as prominent or as sick as Amelia Dyer. But even then, her name has mostly been lost to time. Living in Victorian England, Dyer was a baby farmer, an old practice in which people took in orphaned children in exchange for money. Unfortunately, Dyer had depraved ulterior motives for doing so. Amelia Dyer was a murderer, and she knew what she was doing. This was a calculated career plan that she'd embarked on and sustained over 30 years, come what may. She killed her charges, and while Dyer has only been officially linked to six deaths, her body count is often theorized to be somewhere between 200 and 400. If that's true, it would make Dyer one of the most prolific killers in history. Dyer was finally caught in 1896 and hanged at London's Newgate Prison. Her last words? I have nothing to say. Her death closed a case book on one of the most deadly serial killer cases in British history. Number two, Patrick Mackay. His name was Patrick Mackay. He became known simply as the psychopath. Patrick Mackay may have been one of Britain's most serious serial killers. In his early 20s, Englishman Patrick Mackay became obsessed with Nazism. He was also a heavy drinker and drug user, and he claims to have committed his first killing by drowning a homeless man in the River Thames. A few years later, on March 21, 1975, he fatally attacked a priest with an axe. Once again, the circumstances of the murder shocked even hardened police officers. I've been to several gory scenes before, but I, I've never seen so many injuries on uh, a murdered person before this. Following Mackay's arrest, he became the prime suspect in dozens of killings, most of which occurred after the victim was robbed. Mackay has been officially tied to three deaths, but he personally claims to have killed 11. He was sentenced to life in prison and remains there to this day. Detective Chief Inspector Lou Hart looked deep into Mackay's eyes during one haunting and memorable interview. He believes Mackay should never be released. Before we unveil our top pick, here is a dishonorable mention. Clementine Barnabet. She claimed to have committed 35 murders with the help of a hoodoo charm. Number one, Carl Denke. This man's lack of mainstream attention is baffling, considering the extent and severity of his crimes. Accurately known as the Forgotten Cannibal, Denka was a Prussian man who killed up to 42 homeless people between 1903 and 1924 and consumed their remains. Denka was a well-liked organist at his local Lutheran church and ran a food shop that sold various kinds of meat. Yeah, you can guess what people now suspect. Denka was caught in 1924, but took his own life before questioning could begin. When police searched his home, they found countless body parts, 
His motivation and much of his grisly story remains unknown. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.